Fenley, how's it going, man? Fox LA, can we talk to you real quick about SIM swapping? Uh, no. Face to face with a phone company employee accused of opening the door for a new kind of criminal. You didn't take a $3,500 bribe to help SIM swappers? SIM swappers, gaudy, flashy con artists living off of stolen money, and their victims can be left ruined. I took a million dollar loss. I knew immediately that I was being SIM swapped. They were able, with the number of people they had, to kind of drain just about everything I had. Fox 11 is bringing you along as we pull back the curtain on these high-tech heists. This entire crime can take no more than 10 minutes and can bankrupt a person. Fear, tear in the headlights. Robert Ross still remembers the panic he felt on October 26, 2018. It began when his phone started showing these notifications for a withdrawal request on one of his financial accounts, a request he never made. Moments later, his phone displayed no service from AT&T, and his laptop showed his Gmail account suddenly logged out. My heart was pumping a lot. Between those three things together, I realized something was way off and I was being hacked. A SIM swap is when a scammer gets a hold of the phone number and personal information of a victim, then calls the victim's wireless carrier, impersonates them, and requests the phone number be transferred to a new SIM card they have in their possession. If successful, the con artist has effectively taken over the phone number, and they can take advantage of the text-based dual authentication checks that protect our sensitive accounts. They can change passwords, lock the victim out of their own lives, and even empty out their financial accounts, which is exactly what happened to Ross. I went to the Apple store to figure out what was going on with my phone, and they called AT&T and determined that there was an unauthorized SIM change in my account, and by then, all of my money was already gone. One million dollars, an overwhelming majority of Ross's life savings and the money for his daughter's education was all gone in less than one hour after the hacker converted it all to Bitcoin and withdrew it. And I didn't have other millions of dollars, that was my million dollars. Ross's case was immediately picked up by the REACT Task Force, an elite group of high-tech law enforcement investigators based in Northern California. They specialize in prosecuting SIM swaps. Within three weeks, they had analyzed AT&T cell tower pings in New York State and arrested 21-year-old Nicholas Truglia on numerous felony charges in relation to the hacking of Ross's accounts. Truglia had been enjoying a gaudy lifestyle, living in a luxury high-rise in Manhattan, partying and flying on private jets. He was extradited to California to face his charges, where he's pleaded not guilty and his preliminary trial is set for October. He apparently did this to several other people, many other people. One of them was allegedly blockchain and cryptocurrency investor Michael Turpin. So I've been sim swapped twice. Turpin won a $75 million civil judgment against Truglia, who he sued for being involved in the 2018 SIM swap that stole $24 million from him in cryptocurrency. Truglia had even allegedly posted this tweet, stating that he had stolen the $24 million. On his phone is the day of my hack, him texting his dad and his best friend saying, I'm rich, I've got, I, I got $20 million. Turpin is also suing AT&T in federal court, he says after he was SIM swapped in 2017, he upgraded to AT&T's higher security and was still SIM swapped a second time. He claims AT&T employees are culpable and the company needs to be held accountable. We believe that, uh, you know, they are as responsible as the criminals. LA TV journalist Elsa Ramon agrees. I believe I was targeted. Ramon tells me after she was SIM swapped in April, she also demanded extra security from AT&T on her account. I also had AT&T note on my account that SIM swaps are absolutely forbidden and not allowed at all on my account unless I come into AT&T, physically come in, present my ID, and prove that it's me. But less than two months later, it happened again. Picked up my phone and sure enough, it said no service again. I knew it. They were back. I was SIM swapped again. And this time, I was livid. This time, the hacker got into her messaging apps and began threatening her cryptocurrency contacts to send two bitcoins or else. I took all the safety precautions. Again, all of my information is exposed. She launched into a Twitter tirade against AT&T, calling them inept 
and venting her frustration. And I felt at this point that it was an inside job. And inside jobs do happen. According to this federal criminal complaint in Michigan filed in May, three people, all employees of AT&T or Verizon, were all charged with wire fraud after they allegedly accepted bribes from a group of SIM swappers called The Community, based in Michigan. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? One of them was this Southern California man named Fenley Joseph. According to his federal complaint, while working at a SoCal Verizon store, he accepted a $3,500 bribe from a SIM swapper to turn over personal identifiable information on Verizon customers, which resulted in the theft of $100,000 from a SIM swap victim. We tracked him down in Marietta, where he's out on bond. Finley, how's it going, man? Fox LA, can we talk to you real quick about SIM swapping? Uh, no. You used to work at Verizon, right? You're accused of taking bribes to help out SIM swappers? I have no comment. No comment? Nothing to say, sir? You didn't take a $3,500 bribe to help SIM swappers? No comment, sir. Trying to give you a chance. He hasn't entered a plea, and his next court hearing is set for October 3rd. I am here to tell you that these are criminals that we have never seen before. Erin West serves as deputy district attorney in Santa Clara County. She works hand-in-hand -hand with the REACT task force to hunt down and imprison SIM swappers. She's currently prosecuting Nicholas Truglia's criminal case, and she secured the first ever conviction of a SIM swapper this year. He was driving a $500,000 car that he had bought with Bitcoin. His name is Joel Ortiz, a Boston man who had been renting a mansion in Hollywood Hills. He was arrested at LAX, convicted, and sentenced to 10 years behind bars for SIM swapping 40 victims and stealing $5 million from them. He's now in San Quentin prison. We are seeing people between the ages of 13 and 25 who are living in their mom's basement, existing off Uber Eats, never leaving their homes, and all of a sudden, they're instant millionaires. They are flagrant, they're obnoxious, they have common things that show their wealth and they flaunt them. Everybody gets a diamond-studded watch, everybody starts going to clubs, drinking expensive champagne. And Ramon has a message for SIM swappers as well as those accused of helping them. It's not foolproof, and you guys are fools. And Robert Ross went on to tell me that he is planning to sue AT&T as well, as he believes his million-dollar loss was an inside job at AT&T. A judge recently ruled that Michael Turpin's lawsuit against AT&T will move forward. It will not be thrown out. Now, we did reach out to AT&T for a comment on all of this. They only sent us a one-sentence response you can see right here, saying in part, quote, this is an industry issue. Please contact CTIA for more information. So not much on at and side. So Elsa Ramon sounded like she did everything right, and yet this mm -hmm. still happened to her. So if people are watching at home, what can I do to stop this? The experts say there's not a whole lot you can do. What the phone companies will tell you is Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, at and You can get SIM swap security, upgraded security. That's where you're supposed to be able to put a PIN number on your account. So any account change, you have to give a PIN number, whether it's on the phone or in person. The problem is, Sometimes the employees know those PIN numbers, yeah. and they can be bribed, as you've seen. Sure. And this happened to you? This happened to me back in 2017 when I was living in Charlotte. Same situation. I was at work. My phone started showing up all these login requests I wasn't doing. Then it went to no service. Uh, ended up finding out it was somebody at a store in Texas doing it. And by the time it was all done, uh, my dad had passed away a little bit before, and I lost all his voicemails because of it. Never got him back. Yeah.